talking to us. All right, guys, this is Talented Tuesdays. I'm your host, Kai Speaks, aka Mr. 205 to 305, aka One Chain. I have our guest here for the evening. We have Aki, um, one half of In Good Company Miami, also a curator, host, you name it. This guy's very talented. We're putting great events together in the Miami area and bringing people together for good vibes, good times, and everything like that. So real quick, real, real quick, Aki, just introduce yourself. Tell people where you're from. Okay. How you ended up doing what you're doing? Cool. So hi, good evening to everybody. Um, my name is Aki Smythe. Uh, like you said, I'm half of In Good Company Miami. Basically, our platform is to curate events for um, millennial creative entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we want to give a platform for like creatives to network. Uh, specifically, uh, creatives that are like pursuing mm -hmm. uh, whatever their creative art is as like a way to like pay for and make a livelihood out of it. Cool. Um, and I'm from here, so I'm from the crib. You know, I'm from 305. So I went to uh, college at Florida and then so that was my time away, and I came back to Miami. Yeah, you know. So all right, so. A lot of you guys, I'm pretty sure you remember the word creative. It's used a lot on Talented Tuesdays as we have a lot of creatives on the show. How would you describe the term creative? Like, what does it mean to be a creative? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, I think everyone's creative, mm -hmm. um, regardless of if you're like a lawyer or if you're like a photographer. I think that's uh, people tap into their creativity different. Mm -hmm. um, I would say like a creative creativity is just what gives you like peace so it's whatever you feel like whether it's bringing people together whether it's some um, art whether it's music it's that one thing that sort of um lets you separate yourself from the world mm -hmm. um and gives you joy so mm -hmm. now um before we get into because i remember you did an event based on being a create uh creative in miami before mm -hmm. we get into that Tell us a little bit about In Good Company, which, by the way, I did mention the key is one half of In Good Company. Uh, if you guys remember Zayed, we had her on the show a couple months back. Uh, she's the she's your other half. Right? Yeah, definitely. So tell us about how In Good Company got started and how that bond between you and Zayed got formed. Okay. Um. So like I said, first off, like shout out In Good Company. You can follow us on Instagram at, at In Good Company Miami. Put it right uh, make sure I follow you back. But uh, yeah. So uh, Good Company itself. That's something that me and my friends actually called ourselves, including Zayed from like middle school. So I've known Zayed since middle school. Uh, it was probably like a group of like seven, eight of us. Um, and we were the types to always do like house parties. We did hotel parties, but we never put under a name. It was just something that we did. Mm -hmm. um, then we all sort of went our own ways as far as like with college, came back. Um, and then for me specifically, um, I had worked corporate out of college for six years. So I was working like 60, 70 hour weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, just like on that corporate grind and it was my first career job outside of college so I didn't really know what to expect I thought it was just a norm mm -hmm. and then like honestly on my sixth year something just sort of like got to me and it was like this there has to be more to it than like working like this like literally working 60 70 hours and and I was compensated well but like I just didn't, I didn't have any time for myself. Right. Um, and then at that time, uh, Zayad had uh, just came back from New York. She was out out for two years. Uh, we actually had our first event called Coast Basel, which was a year mm -hmm. ago. Um, and it sort of with our two friends, uh, their names are Coast. Uh, they actually are like a rap duo. Um, so we did it during our Basel week. And then it's just something that we realized that we're really passionate about. Like we like bringing people together. Um, a lot of our friends are like classified like under creatives and we just wanted to create a platform for them. Mm -hmm. And so it just sort of naturally came from that. And we wanted to show like a variation of like what millennials like to do, specifically like millennials of color. Like it's not just like partying and turning up, like obviously that's part of it, but mm -hmm. we do like discussions. Um, you know, we do like, um, discussions like even here that we're doing where we're able to just learn from each other and try to help each other out in this world because it's not easy yeah <laughs> so so there's a social aspect of it and a cultural aspect of, of course it, everybody's definitely. coming together you know learning from each other like you mentioned mm -hmm. so um are you doing it now are you doing this full time is this what you're um you know what just so i so i stopped my career uh my old corporate job mm -hmm. like eight months ago and honestly i had to take the time to really like find what i wanted right. to do mm -hmm. and sort of rebrand myself um, for now, I don't put too much pressure on it because I feel like it's my like creative outlet and I don't want to put the 
pressure of like, okay, this is how I need to feed myself. You know, I had money saved and I already had sort of a plan to um, not work ideally for like a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think organically, it's definitely something that will grow into other stuff, um, whether it's outside of events or whatnot. Like, I think the brand itself will grow into something that I definitely see myself. Uh, making a living out of those mm -hmm. ideas makes yourself or at least at the least a platform to other things right okay so. and i guess guys is a great time to mention feel free to ask questions i'm gonna have some questions for a key but you know anything pops up to your mind anything at all you want to learn something more about a key what he's doing with in good company anything feel free to you know drop in that comment section i will however mention keep the comments positive we want to keep the negativity out of your everything <laughs> Positive vibes only. Nah, bring the energy. Yeah, bring the energy. So, so, all right. So, tell us about um, the event that you guys had about being a creative uh, in Miami. That was that wasn't a locker room talk, was it? No. no. So we had one. You mm -hmm. talking about the creative and broke? Yeah, creative okay. and broke. So yeah, that was like one of our first discussions. It was called uh, "I'm a creative and I'm broke." Mm -hmm. And a lot of the events that we do is just uh, honestly, it's like a reflection. You know, some people they express themselves through like the music that they write or um, through acting like for me specifically I feel like I express myself through the events mm -hmm. and so like this was just something that I saw like me and my friends were just talking and it's just sort of like this creative like realm it just seems to be one that's very comfortable of just being like okay well you know I, I like to do photography, I like to do art, but I can never pursue it to like have a living. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to just like question um, not only myself, but everybody and just say like, okay, we all have these thoughts like I'm a creative and I'm not financially where I want to be, but like how do we get there? You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. Who do we partner with to get there? Um, how do we turn our creativity into a business? Because at the end of the day, it's a business. Starting from simple things like getting your business LLC, um, making sure that you're involved in uh, different um, organizations so you're able to like network. and. I think that's the thing with a lot of creatives, they seem to be very introvert. Um, and I can understand just because you're expressing your art and you're sort of really putting yourself out there like in a vulnerable level. But then in that aspect, you need to like find a team to facilitate that. So maybe you're not the person to speak to people and to bring a fan base, but like you get a group of you to do it so you feel more comfortable or maybe someone that you sort of look up to like as a manager and my management experience like I really see like coming into use here because I saw them that person that a lot of uh, my friends that are super creative as far as like art and singing like they feel comfortable talking to me and trying to at least figure out strategies on like how we can mm -hmm. um, you know make money from this right okay interesting and um, so if you could try and dissect how that event when did it go as planned mm -hmm. to the lessons and the jewels that were dropped during that event? yeah i mean it went it went better than planned actually mm -hmm. um so basically uh okay so we had on the panel like i was moderating it we had herson um eddie which he's half uh, well actually eddie and deji from uh, paper water so they're a dj duo uh we had naja who's half a black family um But we had about five to six people on the panel. And the great thing about it was that um, we realized like being um, being broke, one, is just a mental state. And also two, it's not only about like financial currency, right? So we were talking about how culture itself is a currency. And a lot of people specifically dealing with like millennials as a whole, no matter what your race is. And then if you want to go like specifically into like black and brown millennials, mm -hmm. they know how much we make an impact in culture as far as like brands you know you see um from all the luxury brands like gucci and louis vuitton you see it with nike like th there always has to be someone that is younger usually of color and so we realized that um what we do on the creative realm is something that can turn into like money can turn into like a career um but also two more importantly not everything has to be money based like maybe right. you're able to if you're a photographer and you work with a model um maybe you could just say like hey uh you know if the model wants to really pursue her her passion his or her passion as a photographer you can come and say hey i'll work on like free portraits for you i'll do a free shoot um and then that way both of you win so just understand like collaboration i think that's something too reaching out mm -hmm. talking 
So yeah, that was some takeaways. And I think the other guy you had on that panel was his name was Tunji. Yes, and Tunji, that, my he, bad, bro. Yeah, no, no. And, and the reason why I pointed it out because he stuck out because you had all the creators on the panel. You had all these creators in the room mm -hmm. that were interested in hearing from those other creators, but you also brought the resources to them because mm -hmm. he was someone who invested in startups. So yeah. you had people start up. So you had all these creators in the room and you had somebody who was interested in investing in these creators. Yeah. So that was pretty interesting and pretty dope that you had provided those resources and put like all different types of platforms and resources and different types of creators in one room yeah. for, a, for a conversation. No, definitely. And shout out to Tunji. Like that's obviously that's important, right? Like you mm -hmm. need money mm -hmm. to do everything that you want to do. Like money creates opportunities. Yeah. So, um, you know, Tunji has, it's 11 Venture, that's the name of the company. Mm -hmm. um, I'll post it on the story so you can follow him. Mm -hmm. But he's definitely like a great resource. He has a whole bunch of connections. So if you definitely want to talk about that financial aspect and how to like um, get that capital, mm -hmm. like he's a person to talk to. Definitely. Um, so tell us like, let's go more into the behind the scenes of Inca, Inca Company. Because okay. you know, a lot of a lot of people, I, me and Hurston talk about it all the time, a lot of people don't really see the effort that it takes to like put on these events that they really get to enjoy, mm -hmm. to to the effort that it takes to get everything situated and everything like that. Uh, when you, what's the process from when you have an idea to putting that idea into motion to the finished product? Mm -hmm. What is that process like? Because I know a lot of times you have wine that you provide yeah. to your guests and everything like that. Yeah. So I mean, the first, like you said, is an idea. Mm -hmm. So on my phone, like I have under the notes, like events, and I probably have like thirty to forty events, like just on Very there. Fun. Um, so whenever an idea pops up in my head and like I said, like this is my way of like writing in a journal mm -hmm. or creating music, uh, I put it on my phone under the notes. Um, and then I also talk to like my core group of friends. So like I was saying earlier, like I have a group of probably six or seven, um, of my friends, including Z that we've all known each other from high school. And so this is like over 10 years of friendship. I really like look up to them as far as like what their input is. Um, so I talk to them about the ideas. If it's something that sticks perfect, if it's not, then, um, you know, I keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And then the next step would be uh, looking for venues, which is actually <laughs> very interesting. So I think that's the one thing like a lot of people don't realize because right. um, here in Miami, like, um, so I guess like a little history of Miami, at least for me, is I remember when I was in high school, I would go to the beach a lot. And the beach was that place where, you know, specifically ladies would have to wait um, 30, 45 minutes with their group of friends. And if someone in their group wasn't quote unquote attractive to the bouncer, the whole group wouldn't be able to come in. So basically I'm just saying like Miami can be very picky with like the crowd that they want. You know, you can have the same venue and have like a quote unquote hip hop night and then like have a techno night. And it's like, okay, for techno night, we want this crowd and hip hop night, we want this crowd. Right. So a lot of, there's some venues that, you know, I've gone out to, and to speak to, I've probably spoken to at least like, I would say maybe like 30 to 40 venues. And some venues have just told me like, you know, your demographic is not like what we're interested in. Whether it's on a, um, an age basis, so maybe they don't want like millennials because right. they think that we're kids and mm -hmm. we're spoiled. Or sometimes, I mean, they won't say it specifically, but you can tell just like on a culture basis, like there's just differences of, like culture. Um, so yeah, definitely you want to get like a venue that they see your vision and they give you the autonomy to do what you want. Um, we're going to actually have like a part two of our discussion of like, I'm a creative one broke in two weeks mm -hmm. from WeWork. Mm -hmm. And I got WeWork because there was uh, this young lady that went to another one of our discussions. She works at WeWork and she said, hey, I would love to bring this like over to my location. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that you see too as well is like, um, as you grow, you start having like people that really enjoy what you do. They everybody wants to sort of help out, mm -hmm. and you know I have like great friendships with Alexis. You know with Social Exchange, I've known her since high school. Um, you know the people from the Link Up Black family, obviously with Naja. Um, so all of these, it, we're actually working together. So there's a venue that seems to be uh, more open. <laughs> to our demographics, we'll sort of let each other know. Right. So that's been a big help as well. But definitely venues, shopping is, is difficult. And then from that, 
um you just have a date you just have to go forward with it like you get very nervous because you're just like man how are people gonna accept it mm -hmm. but um and we took a little hiatus we took maybe like a month a month a month and a half to like just sort of figure out what we want to do individually mm -hmm. um and then after that you just set a date towards it um i guess something like more behind the scenes would be like i have like on um, i'm a big google user so i have like a budget sheet so you want to make sure like no, we're working off with very little finances, so it's like, and most of our events are free or like very right. inexpensive, and we want to sort of keep it that way just because we want, we don't want money to be that big of a right. issue, but then with that, it's like, okay, so if we want to have like drinks, like let's get like this sponsor to supply wines, or like let's get this liquor sponsor to supply this, so um, yeah, it's definitely a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but the best thing is um, just seeing everything work out. Right. So. A lot of your events in the beginning were having at Art Africa Miami. Yes. So tell us how you got that venue because you were having, like I said, you were having a lot of the events. Yeah, we're we having them like weekly. It's usually hard for people to have back to back to back events uh -huh. at one venue because, you know, they try to keep it open. So yeah. tell us, like, how that partnership got started. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one thing, like, specifically, I do pretty well. It's just like building, like, genuine relationships with right. people. Um. So I. I live maybe like five minutes away from our Africa. It's located in Overtown, which mm -hmm. if you're familiar to Miami, you know, Overtown is definitely an area that's going through like gentrification and it's definitely going to be looking different like next year and the year after that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just met with Neil. Someone connected me with him. So again, it's like, you know, I try not to burn bridges with people because you never know who could help you out. So somebody connected me with Neil, who was a director. He was actually the first person that really gave us a chance and said, like, hey, I have this space. Um, I don't really utilize it for to do a lot of events. I don't really trust a lot of people, especially um, of, like, your age group. But I like, from the name, he liked it. Like, he liked the name In Good Company. He got to know me and Zayed. He thought we would be people that would respect the space and have like really mentally stimulating conversations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then we had our first one over there. And from then, he was just like, just keep it coming. And we were there probably for like three or four months. I would say at least every other week we were doing something there. And yeah, it just was like a partnership. It helped expose a lot of millennials to Art Africa. They didn't yeah. realize like there's a art gallery that's you know, has a black director mm -hmm. um, in Overtown. Mm -hmm. You know, people didn't think about that or even imagine that. Mm -hmm. So we felt good to sort of showcase that space. So. Yeah, and even like the how you guys did the incorporated the tours in the beginning. Exactly. That was dope too because when I came to one of those events, I was like, "Whoa, I never <laughs> heard of this place before." One, uh, I don't I don't spend too much time in Overtown either, mm -hmm. but to be in that space to see all the different types of art in there. And I think he said a lot of the artists, like, um, that now, correct me if I'm wrong, he said a lot of the artists, he, um, he scouts out himself. Yeah, so, like, it's basically as a director, like, he curates the room based mm -hmm. on, like, what him, what he, what his preference is. Right. So, um, a lot of these artists are artists that have their paintings in different galleries, um, and obviously he's traveled the world looking at different type of art and um, yeah, he just showcases the, showcases the artwork in his galleries and these aren't like inexpensive pieces either. Like I remember there was one piece I was like $50,000 that was there and this is like in overtime, this is one piece. Wow. So when you walk in there, I don't think you realize that you probably are looking at maybe close to a million dollars like worth of art mm -hmm. in overtime. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's definitely like a beautiful space and shout out to Neil for giving us our first chance. Yeah, I mean, with that. very dope person, cool, cool guy to have a conversation with. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, speak, you mentioned gentrification, just wanted to touch on, I heard that, uh, even not just over town and, um, I heard the plans for Miami period as a city was they're trying to turn it into like the U S version of Dubai yeah. like in terms of innovation, all kinds of like different creations for building designs to streets and highways to everything. Like, no, you definitely. see it all the time. Every yeah. Road I, mean, I, st I stay downtown. So it's like the epicenter mm -hmm. and yeah, like they br brickle the plan for brickle is to make it like the second most, um, occupied city like next to Manhattan in the US mm. um, you know they have magic city that they're doing in like the little Haiti area which mm. is supposed to be like a very innovative area for like tech and stuff 
Uh, I think in Opalaka, like Amazon just set up like headquarters over there or oh, one of their okay. spots. I know they were talking so, about doing it in Kindle, but they probably learned that that probably yeah, wasn't such a good doc. Exactly. Because it's so south. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of changes going and like, that's another thing too, not to like talk too much about it. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think it's just important that everyone like engages. Like, mm -hmm. I see like there's gentrification and that was actually a topic that we had. Like we had one about home ownership and gentrification. And mm -hmm. one of the takeaways for me was like, it's going to happen. Right, right like you can't okay. fight it yeah. but what you can do is like educate yourself and then be engaged mm -hmm. and um realize like how this affects you like a lot of people don't even know there's a bright line which the bright line system um is going from uh overtown area it's a high speed train that goes from overtown to Fulada to west palm now mm -hmm. and then within the year they're gonna have the train go all the way to orlando mm -hmm. so it's just uh I would say whichever way works natural to you, like I know everyone's busy and they have like their own stuff that they got going on, but maybe there's that one person that works for the city that could be your go-to, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at articles in the Miami Herald. So definitely being engaged is important. And it's also, it's also a great opportunity to, you know, get involved with your, like really push your business out there yeah. with all the innovation that's going on. Definitely. Uh, so we do have one question from the audience, Ms. AK5. She asked, uh, what was your most memorable showcase event or presentation and what made it special if I'm not being redundant. <laughs> no, you know, I appreciate it. Um, so we have this uh party called Live and Well, which is like I guess the biggest event that we have. Um we have monthly. Um and so like the first one, I was definitely nervous. We did that 1306. I was like, man, I never really did like an event like at a venue like a party. Mm -hmm. Um but what makes this event special is like, again, we put an emphasis on creative entrepreneurship. So we usually have anywhere from three to five vendors. Um, you know, we always have Jasmine, shout out to her. She has this, uh, it's called Soaps by Ja. Um, so she basically does her own like vegan soaps. Um, other vendors that we had, um, we've had people that do their own candles. Um, another one of my boys, Alex uh, Bahrain, he does, he has something called Liquor Smokes, which he basically recycles like old, uh, liquor bottles, so whether it's like Hennessy bottles, Ciroc bottles, and turns them into like different type of artwork. Um, so it was cool because it had like the party club vibes mm -hmm. and then it had like the the people that have like their creative, again, like passion. And so I was nervous because it was on a Sunday. I didn't know how many people were gonna come out. Um, you know, I got two of my friends a host. I felt good about the DJ lineup. And I just remember like the first hour was slow. So I was freaking out mm -hmm. and I was just like, man, like this is going to be whack. <laughs> and then like, I don't know. I mean, I know us, we don't ever come on time. I'm never on time either. So like by the time the hour and a half, two hours came, it was like a flood of people that came in, a big sigh of relief. And I literally was smiling the whole time because, uh, you know, at that event we had like, I would say over 150 people. Mm -hmm. And that was like our first, first event. Right. And so just to see like all that support, mm -hmm. um, see people I haven't seen for a while, um, and us just have a good time and to meet different people, like it was great. And so, um, and that event took a lot of planning. Like it was probably like a month of planning until we actually did it. So since that was my first event, that is the one that I will always hold like true and like special. Mm -hmm. And live and well, more like a day, day party. Right. Yeah, Live World's been changing. First it was like day party, mm -hmm. but then Miami's way too hot to be doing anything during the day. <laughs> For real. So then like we moved it to the nighttime, but now it's getting cooler. So mm -hmm. I think we're gonna keep it around the daytime. Um we took a break last month um and this month. We're gonna have a house party on Friday, so check out our Instagram page on the link or you can go to house party volume two dot eventbrite.com to RSVP. Just to sort of fill that in, but we're definitely gonna do live and well again. We think we found a great venue in Little Haiti that can sort of create the vibes because we want to make it like an indoor outdoor vibe. Mm -hmm. It's getting a lot cooler now, so yeah. people actually want to be outside and partying. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> see, when you're saying it's getting a lot cooler, a lot of, a lot of our viewers are up north. Oh, so, so when you <laughs> when you say a lot cooler, they're thinking outdoors. Nah, nah, we're, we're still nah. wearing tank tops. Yeah, a lot cooler shirt. down here means. Is that atmosphere, like you said, everybody want to be outside and be all, you know, 
Yeah, like, like it's negative. crazy hot. Like <laughs> you really have to like step outside with just a thin layer of shea butter. If that, you actually don't even wear any shea butter. Like no shea butter. You're not gonna be ashy because you're gonna be sweating. You're gonna time. be sweating. So it makes no point of like just come out there as you are. Dog. Like during the let humidity do its course. Yeah, let it do its it's thing. Too hot. Dog, I remember we was trying. Uh, I was when I first moved down here. I'm trying to play play ball. Cause that's that's how I meet people. Like mm -hmm. especially in the new area, I try and play ball and meet people that way. And I go to the courts like two, three o'clock. Oh no! First of all, <laughs> inside the not yeah, only was I in the gym, yeah. I was hot as hell, but nobody was there. And I was like, not. damn, nobody here. Nah, we at the gym, bro. So I left, came back around like six thirty. Courts is packed. Yeah. I came on. So who got next? Next after next after next after yeah. next. Everybody come out around like six thirty. Yeah, during the summertime. No, now definitely. You can come out around like two o'clock. No, it's, it's too hot. Like yeah. we do. Uh, I know, like with my friends that play ball, like. All of us usually done that, like 24 hours at LA Fitness. Like it's an indoor gym. It's too hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got another question from Ms. AK85. She okay. asks, "How long does it take for you to plan events now, especially if you get more experience with it and everything like that, uh -huh. as opposed to you know month long planning for your first event?" Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, now it's definitely quicker. But again, it's like a lot of attention to details. Yeah. So like I'm the type of person that the event space has to like fit what the event topic is about right so like um you know we're doing like an event again this friday at like um one of my friend's house um but it's also the creative agency like it's sort of they live and they work out there it's called half full creative um so because it has like a house frame we wanted to sort of have like a house party type of theme right sort of throw it back to you know uh, 1999, early 2000. So now it takes me, I would say it usually takes me about like two to three weeks, but again, too, it depends on like the venues. Like one thing, again, with us, like for instance, our Africa was amazing, but we want to expose people to different areas in Miami. Just like how you said it was your first time over there in an overtown. Mm -hmm. Like we want, well, me specifically, like I want us to feel comfortable in every space. So yeah. whether you're at like the penthouse in South Beach, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're in Brickell or whether we're in Overtown, um, like I want us to feel like we can go to different spaces. And so sometimes, yeah, and feel comfortable. So like, for instance, like the one that we're doing at WeWork in two weeks, um, the discussion event that took about like a month and a half because they were so booked that I had to wait a month for the space. Mm -hmm. But I knew specifically, like I wanted to do it at WeWork and I wanted to do it there on the beach. Cause again, I wanted us to go to spaces that, um, uh, we may not go to ideally and make sure that we, um, you know, we network and feel comfortable. Yeah, and, and to add on to that, sometimes I feel like when you have to, when you when you have venues that are booked or you have to wait because they're not available at that mm -hmm. time, I feel like it's a blessing. You can look at it as a blessing mm -hmm. because it gives you that extra time to plan. It forces mm -hmm. you to give that extra thought into everything and it gives you that extra time to shake the nerves and to, you know, move forward with it. Yeah. Because I feel like sometimes with us, like for, for me, we were trying to get planned for the uh, the youth summit. Mm -hmm. At first, we were trying to plan it for September. Mm -hmm. Things didn't really work out the way they were supposed to work. And then, as we're organizing it, it's already the end of September. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we got approved to do it for the second week of October. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa! All right, now that's way too soon. But it's like, is that going to be the only time I can get it? Yeah. Do I have to make it happen? I was going crazy. Then all of a sudden, I said, okay, second week of October may not work. Let's go for the second week in November. Mm -hmm. And it was like a huge blessing because. Yeah. It's like now I have so much more time to put that extra attention into detail like yeah. I said and everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's definitely important. Like you I mean it's really at least God's timing. Like whenever mm -hmm. he feels like it's time, it's when it's time to like execute. Um definitely give yourself time to market and yeah, just have like a plan in place. So mm -hmm. so speaking of marketing, what is your I know you, of course, you have the social media uh, and uh social media platform, mm -hmm. but what's your like uh, another marketing and promotion tool that you use yeah i mean honestly like so i would say like marketing for me is very important mm -hmm. um yeah we obviously have the instagram page we have our website which is www.ingoodcompanymiami.com mm -hmm. um but most what's been impactful for me is uh just going to other people's events. Mm -hmm. So I'm very like supportive again to like Alexis, for instance, with Social Exchange. I just went to a Black Professional Network with Kanasha. Um, she did an amazing job with that. Uh, you know, just going to other events to like network. That's how I network. Mm -hmm. I can't go to like an event 
that you have like a name tag and it's like very like formal and awkward like i like going to like parties or like discussions personally mm -hmm. so like that's why i network and also like i just plug myself like if when we watch this you're probably gonna see like six times that i plugged like no, this definitely. event etc cetera, etc cetera. but i would say most importantly is like word of mouth like you'll see how quickly things spread and again it's just about treating people right um it's about letting people feel like they're engaged and they play an impact in in whatever your company is um and people want to help you know what i mean you can't have everybody help um you definitely want to have people that you trust mm -hmm. but like you i think again like back to like my management like background like i'm really i feel very confident like delegating so it's like okay this is a game plan like you take care of this you take care of that um but social media is big like yeah. you post something on instagram and especially now they have this thing where like you tag it on the ig story and then like the person could just like flip and add it to their story yeah. and it goes from like maybe you have a thousand followers to like you tagged it to like someone that has like i don't know five thousand followers and boom like that type of engagement happens and then boom this happens and then they look at it um and then they repost it so um yeah i think it's just putting it out there yeah, it's definitely it's definitely important to check those insights if you oh, yeah. have a business profile you can't do it as a personal but you have a business profile it's definitely important to check those insights because you can see how the post is doing with engagement mm -hmm. and everything like that um so okay so what the, it's also important to have different types of strategic posting as well when it comes to the social media because mm -hmm. I, I and i noticed that you guys have the uh, the MCMs and the WCWs and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and that's also a good way to spread word yeah, out because people see themselves on you guys' page as a shout out, exactly. and of course they're going to send it to their people and they're going to look at your page. So why did y'all yeah. get started with that? Um, I mean to be honest, it was again like our platform is really just to find a way to. It started off with like a group of us, right? So just find a way to like put ourselves out there, and um, I think naturally, like I didn't study marketing my degree was international business mm -hmm. um but like i have a passion for marketing my sister she was involved in marketing for like in the music industry so i sort of get it and um you know that was like you said like not only are we creating a platform of like what our friends do and let people see like hey if i want a photographer you know like let's say jay for instance mm -hmm. i i saw that she was yeah, she was, just she was here week. but like you know like like you said, like people see that they're on there and then they screenshot it and then they put it on their IG story and then they tell their friends and then that finds a way. So like, again, it's just a way of like marketing um, organically for me, but it's not even about that really. It's just about, again, at the foundation, just like showcasing people and letting people get to know more than like what their job title is. Like, you know, we've had people that were I don't know, lawyers, but they also enjoy like music and they enjoy photography and you get to know like different layers about mm -hmm. people. So, um, and also put this in a positive light. Like I think constantly, um, I feel like as young people, so as millennials as a whole first, and then also specifically as people that are like black and brown at times, um, there could be like negative, um, uh, conceptions of this word or portrayals of us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think um you know i always want people to see like both sides of the story yeah and so to see like you know people are multifaceted like mm -hmm. they can be lit at a party on mm -hmm. saturday and then like on monday they could go back to being like the ceo of their company right and they're to me i think you're able to do both definitely yeah okay so i do want to have time to talk about um locker room talk so let's switch gears into the the yeah. discussion side of things because i feel like what you have created with locker room talk is very essential to because it's open now is locker room talk always only open discussion for men or have you had locker room talks where it's co-ed we've had the one co-ed yeah one, <laughs> are you laughing so tell us about the one co-ed oh, man man uh, <laughs> didn't happen as planned <laughs> like um so i guess just to explain locker room talk to everybody yeah. so yeah. it's once a month it's a men's only discussion that we do we're actually having it next week wednesday um it's going to be our seventh one and it's like a round table discussion so different topics that we had um we've had like men in the me too movement we've had a locker room talk about vulnerability um we had a locker room talk about race and again, the premise of this is it's actually been sort of our most controversial mm -hmm. thing or event because, you know, people don't understand like why 
um, there had to be a men's only discussion. You know, there were some ladies that were just like, hey, we want to get involved. But it's sort of like, um, I think it's just important like for us as guys just to talk. Again, like this event happened from my friends, just mm -hmm. thinking about like the barbershop, thinking about like, mm -hmm. you know, watching football games on Sunday and, you know, you're watching the game and all of a sudden like some like emotional stuff comes out or like some personal stuff, man, this is going on with my chick or whatever, whatever. And so I just want to create that space where it didn't have to just be like those type of events where like men could just talk mm -hmm. um, from all different types of race, mm -hmm. um, sexual orientation, um, um, nationality and just find like topics and it's been real like we usually have I would say average of 20 guys um, and man I, people have told their personal stories of almost committing suicide mm -hmm. um, we, so basically suicide attempts people that are in and out of depression and you know I think society teaches us men like not to be emotional because yeah. you know if you're emotional you punk you know what mm -hmm. I mean like you're you're a bitch like whatever it is mm -hmm. so I think a lot of guys have like these bottled up feelings and so when they realize at least for me like I feel like I'm not the only person like oh you're going through this too like you um you know you're insecure about that I thought it was only me you mm -hmm. know what I mean yeah. so it's been dope with that um so when we did the co-ed one it was interesting just because um <laughs> I feel like um, it, it, it turned more into like a, a venting session <laughs> versus a um, like, okay, let's like have a topic and like, let's unify around it. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that's not what locker room talk is. It's not to place blame on anybody and say, these people are like this, like this gender is like this, this race is like that. It's yeah. more of just like, a, this is the topic. This is how I handle the topic. Our next one's going to be about spirituality, mm -hmm. which I think between 25 to 34, you get to that thing where you're like, you know what, there has to be more than just like earth. Like there has to be purpose, there has mm -hmm. to be reason. Um, you know, there's that gut feeling. So we, I wanna like tap into that and see like how do people um, like realize their spiritual, uh, like when they recognize like, hey, this spirituality is important and mm -hmm. they sort of like that road to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great, like they wrote us up on WLRN, which was exciting. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. And, you know, I definitely, I've heard different, like, people, people said, uh, put on podcasts. I, I like, too, that it's not um, on video. Mm -hmm. It's very, like, intimate. Mm -hmm. um, so, that way, um, people can really be honest. Because, yeah. you know, in front of the camera. People put on that front. You put on the front. You're not about to, like, really put it out there because you don't know where this content's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, but since there's no cameras there, I'm telling, like, like people are going in mm -hmm. you know what i mean they're being very open with themselves um men specifically obviously so yeah. it's great yeah i've been there in person to a couple of the talk, uh, locker room talks and like you said people share some deep stories and you'd be like damn yeah you really going through that and they make and then it open up your, your it takes away your vulnerability and makes you feel more comfortable to share what you've been going through as well so that's important too yeah definitely um so what led to what led to the this topic for the upcoming lock room talk? The spirituality? Mm -hmm. Um, man, it, again, like, these events are, they're very, like, current to, like, how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was raised, um, like, in a Christian household. Um, but, like, I feel like, and uh, even when I went to college, like, I went to a really good church uh, up at FAM in Tallahassee. But then afterwards, I sort of like disconnected from like the church. Mm -hmm. um, I got, you know, that corporate job and I was just thinking like money, 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 like let's get it. And then um, I just really had to like get down to myself. So I, I read a lot. I read a lot of different types of books. Um, and so I just realized like there's a purpose. There's more to life. Um, and like what is my intuition? Like what's my gut? What's that thing? or person that I talk to uh, when I'm going through things, whether it's good or bad. Um, so I really wanted to, and this is something again, like relating to my friends, seeing people around me. Um, a lot of people are going into like their spiritual renaissance, if you want to say, yeah. of just realizing like, okay, there's something more that's deeper. Like I'm, I can't do it by myself. Um, and sometimes you don't know how to classify it. So again, it's like, I'm curious to hear other people's 
story of how they've come to their spiritual renaissance like we're gonna have some like co-moderators for it it's not really a panel but at least people that specifically i trust to sort of like give their inputs and some people have came to their spiritual record realizing from like early on mm -hmm. um some people are still in denial about it they're just very stuck there some people are realizing it like me I, there's definitely an awareness mm -hmm. and i'm very curious to just hear about like everyone's story so mm -hmm. Important. When, when, and when is it again? So, plus myself. Yeah. So, it's next week, Wednesday. We're going to do it at uh, 1306. So, 13th and North Miami Avenue. You can RSVP. If you go to our Instagram page, so at Inga Company, there's a link in the bio. Um, yeah. And then you, we actually also, too, like from the, the talk, um, I started like a group me. You know, guys wanted to keep the conversation yeah. going. So, we have that. Um, yeah, and it's it, and it's weird because I don't see myself definitely not gonna be like oh I'm a I'm a, a man for men's rights and stuff like that. But that has been like to me my most like impactful event. Like other mm -hmm. events we stop and start, but that one I've kept going mm -hmm. just because of the feedback that I've gotten from a lot of the men that say like yo we need this space, like yeah. we need to be able to talk, we need to be able to come together, um, we need to be able to vent. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's not easy for anybody, but specifically for men, um, you know, obviously me being a man, like there's such a box you have to be in, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You can't be too aggressive, but then, you know, you can't be too soft and all these like stereotypes that you got to fall under that are very uh, frustrating. You know, you got to keep your emotions in. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's like, how do you, you know, we're human, so you have emotions, so how do you display them? And sometimes that can come off in anger. So it's like that whole thing. And I wouldn't even say, because I could see how a lot of people would have that misinterpretation that is, you're like, man, you're a men stand for men's rights. And yeah. I wouldn't even necessarily call it that because I, <coughs> I see it as you providing a space not only for men to vent and, you know, get those things off their chest, but also for men to put other ideas that corrects. Mm -hmm. The because uh, we talked about toxic ma masculinity to patriarchy and everything like that, where it also checks the the to toxic ideas that we have of each other. Exactly. So I think that 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 that's a uh, it creates that that type of. Space. And also, this lastly, like also bring it home. So whether you have you know your girl, your wife, whether it's your mom, your sister, like this is something that benefits like everybody. Yeah. Right. So you're able to come back home where, wherever home is and just be a little bit lighter and be like hey you know i was able to like get some stuff off my chest so yeah, yeah i definitely agree so guys as i wrap up i have a couple more questions for a key feel free to ask any questions that you may have and i'll get to them before we wrap things up uh real quick i do want to have you like um just say we have a couple kid uh young entrepreneurs out there that are interested in event plan and everything what's mm -hmm. some what's some advice that you have for them that uh, to help them tackle and get those sponsorships and partnerships. Yeah, I mean, I think start, let's look at your your network. So go down your contact list. Mm -hmm. um, and I've established a good amount of contacts due to like my prior job. And I think being here from Miami, born and raised here was like an advantage to my sister, which has been a big help. Mm -hmm. um, and also to just recognize like anything that you're building, like you have to build with the people that are around you. I think we have these aspirations of like reaching out to people like, I don't know, like you want to be a director and I got to reach out to Issa Rae, right? And mm -hmm. it's just sort of like, okay, Issa Rae is not even in the same state as you. You're probably not going to get in contact with her. But who is someone like in your crew that you can see that has those like same type of like aspects? Mm -hmm. Or who is someone that you um, look up to? And sort of just build that together. So I feel like doing events, you definitely want to be someone that realizes the talent that people have, be able to manage that. Um, and, and, and start small, don't start huge, you know what I mean? Start with intimate events, um, uh, have an array of events, be aware of like what the need is. So put yourself in the, the head of like the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, hey, there's no brunch events. So like, you know what? I think I should do a brunch event. And then sort of scale it to size where it makes sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Okay, good. That's some good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my next question, I ask this question every week. Um, except for last week, you guys might have noticed I wasn't here. Uh, Herson, shout out Herson for filling Herson in. Herson dropped the ball. 
No, he didn't drop the ball. Uh, he, he, it's just not his thing. So he probably was like, I don't know if I should touch I'm it or not. Because yeah. he's not he's not that far <laughs> from the from the ground. So. Yeah, some people, you know, they might be like, I don't want to touch it. That's his thing. So mm. I understand that. So I ask this question every week, and that's the red pill or the blue pill. So you take the red pill, you go forward ten years, and you have five million dollars liquid in your bank account. Okay. Now you take the blue pill, you go backwards ten years, but you know everything that you know now. Which pill are you taking and why? Oh, I'm not going backwards. So whichever one makes me go forwards. Mm. And it's not even about the money. It's just like, again, everything happened for a reason. And okay. I don't, yeah, it's just like, that's just the, it, it's definitely been a journey. I mean, as much as, you know, it sounds like, oh, it's great. You have your own company to stand there. Like any type of company, it doesn't give you enough money to uh, sustain yourself financially your first year. You know, you're investing into yourself. Um, specifically with us, we've been doing a lot of free events. Um, so definitely like finances have been real. Um, again, like I came from a job where I had um, a company car, almost I was making like nearly six figures. Mm -hmm. And then now it's just like, there's no stable income. Mm -hmm. But with all that being said, I have such a, a joy and happiness in myself. I feel so much more at peace. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and also allowing myself to develop. Like I might do events for another two, three, four, five years. I may, we may stop like next month. You know what I mean? Like I think um, just as like your body grows and it changes, you know, you look at a picture from yourself two years ago as now what I'm learning to accept. And I think it's sort of hard for a lot of people um, it's like allow yourself to grow. You know what yeah. I mean? You're not just what, you know, if you went to college, you're not just what your major said you were and you only stick yourself to that feel like you change. I graduated the fam 2011. So it's been like six, seven years. Like I've changed in my mindset. Mm -hmm. So like I'm going to change as far as like maybe what I want to study and specifically like with YouTube, you know, I've been looking, reaching out to YouTube. There's a lot of free stuff out there. Like learn, intern, um, ask questions, yeah. ask a lot of questions. Um, I YouTube everything. If I'm yeah. trying to learn a new skill or something. No, that's what I'm, I'm doing now. Like I'm really, right now, I really am focusing on digital marketing. That's something like I really wouldn't want to open up my own digital marketing like agency mm -hmm. um, within, the, within the year. So I did like Google AdWorks. I got like certified for that. Um, there's, I forgot the other place that has one, I forgot it. But anyways, it's like different certifications that you could get online. Um, you can YouTube, obviously. Um, so yeah, okay. allow yourself to, to develop. And I pre oh, let me fix that, because we're going to be froze. Oh, we froze? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Hey, we back. Yeah, we back, because I see a lot of video pause. All right, so I uh -huh. appreciate that advice, bro. And uh, <clears throat> that feedback on that question, too. Um, so, you know, you guys see no extra questions on the comment section. Uh, I guess we'll wrap things up. Feel free to, you know, plug yourself in again. Tell yeah. where your events are. So you, times you can follow like me personally um, at Sir Smythe. So it's at S-I-R-S-M-Y-T-H-E. Um, that's my Instagram handle. Uh, definitely I'll follow you back. Um, and like I said, we have a house party on Friday. We actually have a month full of events. So we have a house party on Friday with our family at Half Full Creative. Um, we have our locker room talk for the men's only next week, Wednesday. And then two weeks from now, we have I'm a Creative on Broke, um, basically creating your nine to five to creative entrepreneurship. So learning how to transition. Okay. And by no means am I seeing myself as an expert. This is like, I learn as I go. So again, like all these events that we do together, it's just really like, you know what? I know I'm not the only person that's like feeling like this. And I talk about it with my friends and I like, confirm it. I appreciate you of for course, tuning, bro. joining us this week. Thank you. And I appreciate you guys for tuning in to tell the Tuesday. Thank you for coming in. Cause I, I, I would, I would be doing other stuff, but <laughs> right. if you want to watch me yeah. more power, I appreciate it. He said you want to watch me more power. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure like everybody, we have something to offer. We always learn from each other. Like you said, you, you might've said some things that people didn't know. Thank you. And so we always learn from each other. So yeah. again, appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, Kai Speaks. AKA Mr. Two and Five to Three or Five. We yes. have the key here, one half of In Good Company, Sir Smythe in the building. You know, royalty, right? royalty. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Check it out.